Hello children, welcome back to English English with Kashish. I hope you are having lots of fun studying all your chapters with me and I hope I am making them easier for you to understand. So we are doing today the discovery. Yes, it's the unit 6 of your English language. Now the chapter's name itself tells us something. What does it tell us? It tells us about something discovered, something found, something new that's been found by someone. This is the story of Christopher Columbus just one night before he discovered India. What was happening on that ship at that particular time? What was the mental state of all the people who, was, who were on the ship? There is this captain, like Christopher Columbus was the captain, right? Uh, did everyone still trust him? It was so long the journey that they had been traveling. All the seamen had got tired and they had lost all the trust from their captain. And they were thinking they want to get back to their family. And then they discovered it was the world's biggest discovery. So what happened at that time, the night before they found India? Let's see. In this chapter, the discovery, it is written by Herman Oud. And this is the page number 109. So you have to please study the chapter with me. Let's discuss about Herman Oud. He was, uh, he survived from 1885 to 1951. He was an English author, dramatist, poet and a cricket, very, very talented person. He was known for his historical dramatization of Christopher Columbus' discovery. Some of the published works include Cinderella, Dick Whittleton and his cat, Ali Baba and his son Haji. San Diego Junior Theatre produced his one act children's play, The Princess in the Sleeping Wood in 1953. I am sure you all would have heard about Cinderella and Alibaba earlier. Let's start. So I am going to read the summary before children so you understand the chapter because it is in a drama form. So it will be easy for you to get a little bit uh, about the chapter, know about the chapter and then read it with me. Okay. So Herman Owl's play, The Discovery, dramatizes the events on the last night of Christopher Columbus's sailing expedition to search for a sea route to India. They were on, but they didn't even know that there was something called India there. They just discovered, okay. The story is sometimes anachronistic and credits to Columbus far greater knowledge than he had on the expedition that led to the chance discovery of America. So they were actually in search of India by chance discovered America. Amazing. The crew is restless at the outset and becomes eager for a fight as the play unfolds. They were all fighting amongst each other. They were unhappy and they thought that their leader, the king, did not care about them. The high-handed attitude of Columbus and absence of sympathy for the justified complaints of the crew lead, led to a situation close to mutiny. There were a lot of fights and they had to keep away the captain from them because you know everyone was very impatient now they were all getting very angry in small small things destiny however had decided to bring laurels to columbus and crown his efforts with the discovery of a land that is still not colonized columbus is quite authoritative and stern disciplinarian yet he seeks adventure he is a risk taker. If you are not a risk taker, you will not get what you want. The results will not be there. The play conveys both the strengths and flaws in the character of this great explorer. So we see a lot of qualities of Christopher the Columbus. His authoritative nature. He was a disciplinarian. He wanted everything to happen with discipline. But still, and he never uh, was sympathetic towards his seamen. But he was a good man by the end of the day and he achieved what he had to. So before we read, some think that there are three kinds of people in the world. You may call them the cans, the can'ts and the won'ts. Okay? So some of the qualities are given below. Write them in the respective column. One is done for you. So these we have to do. You can put these qualities in the can, the can'ts and the won'ts. Some people can do. Some people will not do. They will try and some people will, will not even put in an effort. They are always confident of their ability. They think they are too weak to take up the challenge. They are able but unwilling to take up any challenge. They like risk-free job. They are spirited and determined. They are always overruled by the consequences of the challenge. They are by nature lazy and easily satisfied. They are fit to rule. They think. 
they lack confidence in themselves nothing can stop them from reaching their goal they always say it is highly impossible they are optimistic so i have done one for you you people should do it yourself uh, step by step just divide like this cans they are very optimistic they can do it can'ts they lack confidence in themselves but still they can do it won'ts they are optimistic okay now christopher columbus first saw the light of the new world on the night of 11th october 1492 very important underline remember before he could achieve this great feat he was often at open defiance with his crew before he reached this before he actually uh, got through this he was fighting with his crew very unhappy with the crew based on this the play builds up a conflict of great imagination read the play of hermenol to see how this conflict is resolved how is it solved so uh, just to give you an idea of a ship this is how a ship looks like okay all the ships that you must have seen on the sea these are how it looks like i'm just i've just got this picture to give you an idea of how it looks okay see so this is where the play was casted this is where the seamen and everyone was standing and they were conversing now characters very important if you know the characters of the chapter very easy to understand the main character was christopher columbus who was he the captain of the ship then there was pedro gutierrez he was an officer of christopher pepe was a page boy like a ball boy right who does all your odd jobs so this is christopher columbus this is pedro who was uh, the officer keeper of the drawing room and this is pepe he was a male servant who was also living in the ship all right and there were seamen there were four seamen who were they juan patino diego garcia francisco and guillermo aris so these are the four seamen who were in the ship at that time so let's start reading the chapter now i'm going to give you a very short note on what kind of a person christopher columbus was so columbus was a tall well built man his hair was prematurely white with experience he had a fair complexion he was 46 year old and his face was melancholic that means a same expression expression throughout okay now the song of seamen is heard you can hear the seamen somewhere singing the song it is scarcely distinguishable murmur they are singing it in little you know they don't want everyone to hear it but everyone can hear it here's a keg of rum to kingdom come the devil loves but god is dumb they're all drinking they're all drinking rum and they're all saying that no one's listening to us the god is dumb no one wants to listen to us the captain also is not listening to us so they were all in a complaint mode so juan says very sharply what does juan say juan is one of the seamen they ought to stop that the captain is always furious when he hears it isn't it so diego says shan't we even sing to keep our spirits shh we have to be like this we are on a ship there is no one to talk to we have to sing we have to keep ourselves happy they attend with assumed assiduity to the rigging pedro gutierrez comes in now who comes in pedro comes in he is somewhat surprised when he sees the others now these are from your glossary assumed assiduity that means pretended interest just just this okay i'm interested you know i'm not interested but i'm pretending i'm acting as if i'm interested rigging is work of sailing they are all attending they are all coming here just to pretend that they like sailing okay now who comes in pedro comes in and he is somewhat surprised pedro says who is that diego says rising a uh, diego garcia and juan patino sir so pedro says inclined to be communicative it's dark i would welcome the moon so diego says a a that means hi hello don pedro some of us would welcome the coast of spain still more so pedro says pumping what is pumping rudely pedro says rudely impatient diego so diego says surly now these are the expressions can you see pumping is 
encouraging and surly is rudely. So, Pedro says encouraging, okay. Impatient Diego and Diego says surly, that means rudely. There are limits to patience, sir. Now, all of them are impatient. It has been so many days they have been sailing and there is no result. They all want to get back. So, they are all impatient and they are saying that limit to our patience, sir. So, Pedro says laughing at him and you have reached them, huh? Have you reached your goal? Have you reached your mission? Are you being impatient? So, Diego says we are like bats trying to fly by day. It is time he gave way. Why should one man have the lives of 50 in his hands? Now, they are all complaining for Christopher Columbus. Now, have you ever seen a bat in, during the day? No, we have not, right? So, they are saying we are working like bats on a day. There is no goal, there is no mission. We do not know what we are doing. We are tired. It is like he is making one person do work of 10 people. We cannot do it anymore. We are all tired. So, Pedro says with authority, I hope we are not entertaining mutinous thoughts, Diego. What are mutinous thoughts? Rebellious. I hope we are not getting angry with each other now. Come on, tell me, Diego. So, Diego says, mutiny is an ugly word, sir. He said, rebellious anger? No, that is an ugly word, sir. Do not use that word. So, Pedro says to that, and an uglier deed. And yes, that is an ugly word, but an uglier work to do. Why should anyone get angry and impatient? So, Juan finishing his job at the rigging rises and with a salute goes off. So, who goes off? Juan goes off. Now, Columbus comes in, the captain comes in. He is tall, well built man, 46 year old, his hair prematurely white and his complexion is fair and he is almost ruddy, means he is very pink and healthy Italian, right? So, they are usually very white, pink and healthy. So, this is the description of Columbus, the captain, a man of quick temper, he gets angry very soon and irritability which he controls only with an effort, he gets very irritated very soon. So, he has to put in an effort to not get angry. His face in repose is melancholic, melancholic means very sad, always the same expression of sadness. Seeing Don Pedro in conversation with Diego, he looks a trifle suspicious, means he is looking a little suspicious. He turns quickly to Diego. He turns to Diego. Columbus says, that candle on the foremast is guttering. See, that is that it is put right. This comes in and he says that one candle is flickering. What is guttering? That means unsteady. When you see a candle going off, you see it flickering like this, right? So, he says that candle is flickering. Please make it correct. So, Diego suddenly says, a, a, sir. That means, okay, okay. In Italian, it says, a, a, mate. All right. So, Columbus recalling him says, and Diego, Diego comes back and says, yes, sir. So, Columbus says, this is the quarter deck. So, Diego says, yes, sir. So, Columbus says, a good sailor knows his place. So, Diego says with repressed furry, yes sir, Columbus points off. Diego scarcely concealing a scowl goes off. Now, scarcely concealing, that means not hiding. He is not hiding his face. He is very confident and he goes. And anger, he is not scared to show Columbus his anger. He gets angry, shows him that expression and walks off. Seamen off singing again. They are off again to sing their song. Here is a king of rum, to kingdom come. The devil laughs, but God is down. And Columbus and Pedro descend to the quarter deck. Who goes back? Columbus and Pedro go back to their quarter deck. Now, Columbus says, Pedro, they drink too much. So, Pedro says, they are simple men and must have their relaxation. On a ship, in middle of water, what else would you do? You only have the thing of drinking, right? So, they used to drink a little bit and that was their only relax mode. Relaxation, that means a break from work, right? You relax, you take a break from work. 
the next words break from him almost involuntarily. He didn't want to say, but he said it. We have not all your visions, Captain. That means for though. So we don't know what you are thinking, Captain. They are all tired. They need some kind of relaxation. You know you are saying that, but we don't know what your vision is. So Columbus says impatiently, it is my will. Is that not enough? Because he is the captain and everyone has to listen to him. The seamen, the, everyone has to listen to the captain. So he says, it's my will. Isn't that good enough instruction for you to listen to me? So Pedro says, bow his head. Yes, I got the answer. I am answered. Now this is the conversation in a play form between Diego and uh, Columbus and Pedro. Okay. Now Columbus again hastily says, forgive me Don Pedro, a curb for my tongue. Oh, a curb for my unbridled tongue. Unbridled is uncontrolled tongue. My worst enemy. More quietly he says, my will. Friend, because God's will shall that suffice. Now Columbus says, I'm sorry if I said that. I have to literally control my tongue. I don't know sometimes what I say. So uh, it's God's will. God will take me to my mission. Pedro says, not appeased. Now appeased here is satisfied. Now Pedro, after listening to this, is not satisfied. He says, I do not claim your confidence, sir. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. What are you so confident about? So Columbus says, again he got angry, thundering, that means an expression of anger. I claim yours. The sound of the seamen's song is again heard. And again in backside you can see the same song the seamen are singing. A blight upon their singing, a curse upon their singing, bid them stop. Pedro goes off with an air of discontent. So when he can hear the song again, Columbus gets very angry and he says, please ask them to stop this nonsense. I can't bear that anymore. And Pedro goes there with discontent. That means he's not happy with it. When he is alone, Columbus looks out to sea muttering. He looks out to the sea and he's muttering. He's talking to himself. Mystery would God implant the desire to solve mysteries and not provide the solution? That means mysteries are events that are not clearly understood. So he's talking to God and he's saying, will you get me something for which I don't have the answers? Will you give me these kind of mysteries where there is no solution I can look for? Suddenly, Pepe runs up to the steps to the poop. Poop is a high deck at the end of the ship. If you would have seen that uh, the Titanic scene, remember where they both are standing like that, that's a poop. So who comes up? Pepe, the boy. He comes up running to the poop and he says, Columbus is startled. He is either frightened or he is startled. You know, you someone comes and pushes you from behind when you're thinking something, you, you, you really get startled, right? Who is that? He says. Pepe says, me, 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 captain, me, Pepe. So Columbus says, frowning at him, have you been here all the time? Have you been standing here all the time? So Pepe says, please sir, I am off the duty. I am off duty. That means I am not working right now. I am off duty. So Columbus says, then why aren't you down below? Go down. St sit down. Pepe says, whimsically. That means amusingly in a very intimate way, in a nice way. He says, Knowing that he is privileged, because he's a boy and he's his favorite, he knows that he's privileged. I prefer your company to theirs. He says, I don't want to go there. I, they are relaxing. I like your company. I like to be with you more. So he points below. Am I in the way here, sir? So he says, am I in the way here, sir? So Columbus says, humoring him. Humoring, which is again mentioned in your glossary behind the chapter, Liking him, he says, what a boy. And what do they say of the preference? Pepe says, I don't speak to them. I hate them. What do you speak of preference means? Columbus is saying, how are you choosing me over them? Wow, why? So Pepe says, I like you more, sir. I don't like them. So Columbus says, shh, Pepe, and get you gone. Pepe turns reluctantly. Now he turns and sees unwillingly. You know, you don't want to turn and see, but you have to. You have no choice. Quick! The boy goes more quickly. Here, you heard what Don Pedro said. Pepe says, yes, captain, and he is the best. So Columbus says, 
but even he doubts, Pepe says everybody doubts except me. So Columbus says bitterly everybody. So Pepe says except me captain, except me. He goes to him impetuously, impetuously is without any fear, he is very confident Pepe that everybody has doubts but I don't have any doubts. Columbus says he is laying his hand on his head and he says you are young enough to have faith. Thank you boy. So that Pepe, that little boy came and he said no doubts. So that actually created a little bit of faith in Christopher Columbus. So here we see that Christopher has got back his faith. He is feeling a little lonely and lost. But this little boy comes up and says that I like your company and he gets little faith back. So let's solve some question answers and the remaining chapter we will do in the part 2 of the video. Mutiny is an ugly word says Diego. Is mutiny an ugly word? Why? Why is mutiny an ugly word? No, the word is not ugly but the feeling of Diego about mutiny is ugly. Okay, the meaning of mutiny is rebel. He did not like the rebel action of seamen, so he said like that. Okay, mutiny word is not ugly. Columbus feels that whatever he does, it is God's will. What will of God does he like to fulfill through this venture, this mission? This is question number 2, page number 122. You can do it with me. You, these question answers are all available in the app, SSLC Connect. Anytime you want to see, you can just go through the app. So Columbus had trust in God. He believes in God. God's will is to discover the new world and it should be given to their king and queen. God implanted the desire to solve the mysteries, that is to find the new world. According to Columbus, this is God's will and he should fulfill it. Okay? Now, Columbus says, would God implant desire to solve the mystery and he does not provide solutions? Will God give the mystery and the questions and not give the answers and the solutions? Identify the mood of Columbus in the saying. So Columbus had a firm will to discover the new world. He was a sailor. By nature, he was a risk taker to achieve his goal. For his unshaky desire, his fellow men were not supported. They have all opposed to him. At that situation, he thought about the above statement. He was in a very helpless and confused state of mind. Question 4. Pepe says, everybody doubts except me. Why do you think he is an exception? So Pepe shares the vision of Columbus. It shows that unlike the simple seamen with average intelligence and imagination, Pepe is specially gifted and understands the mystery that Columbus is trying to solve. So as we read in the chapter, all the other seamen were forced to go into it. They were forced to sail. But Pepe actually understood the vision of Columbus and was very, very imaginative okay so with this we have finished the part one of the chapter we will do the part two of the chapter in another video follow me soon i will see you with the part two let's see what christopher columbus does later